Kyle doesn't have to get sick of me asking every week, uh, is Auburn going to sign a quarterback? Uh, we got our answer today. Transfer Peyton Thorne comes in from Michigan State. We got Kyle Loomis on the line from E2C Network. It's right here on YouTube, and it's everything Auburn, if you did not guess, from Kyle's decor behind him. Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm very happy today. I'm, I'm so glad that that answer to that question is done. Not just you. But every guest on our YouTube channel, on social media, it's the first question I get. Are we going to get a quarterback in the transfer portal? Folks, today you have your answer. It is done. It is official. It's, it's over. <laughs> but now we shift our minds to something else, a quarterback race. But I obviously know that we want to mainly talk about uh, this individual, Peyton Thorne of Michigan State. Super excited to have him. And uh, I think uh, it sounds most, mostly like Hugh Freeze got his guy he wanted. Peyton Thorne has been the starting quarterback in Michigan State the last two seasons, and Michigan State had a fine season two years ago in 2021, 11-2, won the Peach Bowl, finished in the top 10 in the nation, and Peyton Thorne had a fine season, and he had a good team around him and two really good wide receivers, mm -hmm. and he had Kenneth Walker Jr. in the backfield, who was one of the best running backs in the nation. Things kind of fell apart around him last season, uh, he's a mobile quarterback. He doesn't necessarily have like off the chart type of skills or talent, but he can lead a team. He's smart. He knows how to make decisions. He played two full seasons in the Big Ten. He's mobile. He can move around. I got to tell you, Kyle, they played a game Michigan State last season at Washington in which Keon Coleman, who ironically entered the transfer portal on the same day, mm -hmm. uh, the leading line receiver for Michigan State, he and Peyton Thorne kept Michigan State in the game. They were they were completely outclassed in every possible phase of the game. He was running for his life, making incredible plays, running around like Russell Wilson or Fran Tarkington all over the field, throwing the ball downfield just to keep his team in the game. So Peyton Thorne, I don't want to sell him as some kind of complete game changer, uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, but I certainly believe he's one of the roughly top 25 to 30 quarterbacks in the country. Mm -hmm. And again, a guy that's been uh, in a position to to lead Michigan State in a lot of uh, important games against good opponents. You know, the feeling that I get from him, and I, I'm so happy that you kind of laid that out there nicely for us. For the Auburn fans that are tuned into this, that's a great perspective to have on him. What type of quarterback you're getting in Thorne now. But when I kind of look at not just that one season, but the trajectory of Peyton Thorne, it's a guy that seemingly overachieves a lot. Now, it's not you know completely the story all the way through. Obviously, last year was not a great year. You laid out the reasons why beautifully. But if you look at this, this is a guy when he was being recruited was only attracting names like Western Michigan, who he was committed to up until early signing day. And then on early signing day, flipped that commitment over to who he ended up with, Michigan State. He gets there, not doesn't sit, he plays a little bit in his first year, and I think he even got to start in one game that season. But the next year, wins the job, and they have an incredible year. In some polls, got up to a top 10 ranking, as you already kind of talked about. So this is a guy that continually try, tries, but obviously seems to overachieve a lot, and given the right pieces around him, a great running back, some wide receivers, that could work out really beautifully no matter where he goes. If he's that type of guy that is really good at utilizing what he has around him, playing with him himself and making some plays. I think Auburn really this year really just needs a playmaker. If that's a mobile quarterback, if that's a pocket guy, guy who's just got a little bit of moxie about him, because let's be honest, the program's not in shambles, but it's a little bit loose. The foundation's a little bit rocky. So when I hear you talk about him when I hear others talk about him, when I look at the, propensity to overachieve a little bit the more i look at this pickup for auburn and hugh freeze the more i like it auburn fans if you want to see peyton thorn at his best in a big game on a big stage against a big opponent he may have played better in other games in less meaningful games but check out the 21 michigan game in which michigan state pulled off an upset uh, i'm gonna say that uh, michigan state put up Close to 40 points in that game, won something like, yeah, 37, 30, something in that range. And Peyton Thorne had a big day and they went for it on a fourth down uh, fairly late in that game and uh, sometime in the fourth quarter. And it was like a fourth and three, fourth and five. They didn't play it safe. And he threw a dime over the top 
uh, to basically clinch that game and had a really nice showing against uh, Michigan. So again, don't want to sell him as a Heisman Trophy candidate, but Peyton Thorne is a capable quarterback. Mm -hmm. No question about that. Now we've got a quarterback battle. Uh, TJ Finley moves on. <clears throat> and I'm guessing that uh, reasonable, loyal Auburn fans at least pat TJ Finley on the back for that uh, effort against Alabama, in particular, in which he was basically playing on one leg last season and gutted it out. Uh, that game in particular, and there there were some other ones there, but uh, Robbie Ashford's still in play, and yes. there, there's still a quarterback battle. And yes. I'm going to note that this is just a bit of conjecture on my part that, uh, and I don't know what else was going on at Michigan state, but I, I'm guessing that Peyton Thorne was, wasn't that happy about being uh, continuing to have to battle for his job at Michigan state against Noah Kim. Uh, and after having started two seasons and again, one of them 11 and two and finishing in the top 10 in the country that he had to continue to battle for his job. And so he ends up in the transfer portal. And now we've mm -hmm. got, uh, Ashford versus Thorne. Yes. Yeah, that is going to be your main matchup we're watching. Obviously, with the absence now of TJ Finley moving on, as you pointed out, if you're a reasonable Auburn fan, you pat him on the back, you thank him for his service. Uh, you know, he's leaving as a graduate, too, so that's always going to be a big thing for me. If you leave, I, I would prefer you leave that way, uh, so there's always that connection with us. And, yeah, you brought up the Alabama game. Auburn fans, Georgia State is a scar on our record, our overall record throughout our program's history, if it's not for T.J. Finley. So for those reasons, obviously, it's a pat on the back. We appreciate his time here. And from you know, as long as he maintains that relationship with us in some way, we're going to look at that, or at least I am, in a more positive light, even though it wasn't the most successful time. Our minds now shift to the quarterback race, not are we getting a quarterback, the quarterback race at hand. And really, it is Robbie Ashford versus now Thorne. And I love what Robbie Ashford puts out, not even barely 20 minutes after the announcement became official and we all started jumping on it as media members. He puts out to the effect of iron sharpens iron, let's go type of scenario. I don't have the full quote in front of me, but I love that response in this kid. This is a kid that came in and he has every reason to feel like this is my job. Did you see what I was working with last year? And I still kept us in some games, but instead, at least publicly, is approaching this from the right uh, scenario, is approach, approaching this in a way that he can still battle for the opportunity. Conventional thinking, given experience, you know, Hugh Freeze saying there's a guy out there he was waiting on and this, this magically happens. You would think Thorne's kind of in the lead in that scenario right now. But I love that about Robbie because Robbie's got all the athleticism in the world, some fine tuning on passing. And who knows, one year under Hugh Freeze, less than a year and that may be the thing that kind of gets him in the right direction he may even win out the job but i think it's we're all sitting here we obviously know it, this is thorn's job for now to lose but the competition still will go on and you've got holden gurner who's going to be there and not that i'm dismissing him from that competition because apparently he's made some strides too but i really think as you laid out it is a robbie ashford thorn battle and it's going to be fun to watch over the summer and into fall camp and uh I, regardless i think we'll see both of the guys play some maybe not like a dual quarterback system but at least if let's just play the scenario out if you start thorn if that's what everybody expects at this point robbie ashford's an athlete you use athletes that can help you so he doesn't have to worry about finding playing time in some aspect at the quarterback position We've got Kyle Loomis here to talk Auburn football. And of course, uh, the Tigers have just signed and received the transfer in from Michigan State quarterback Peyton Thorne. You can catch Kyle's work at E2C Network. Uh, when I think Auburn football, historically, looking at positions, I think running back. But when I think Auburn football recently, Gus Malzahn era, mm -hmm. I tend to think defensive line. So Auburn fielded some of the best defensive lines in college football for about a five or six year span there. Maybe not necessarily the last couple of years, mm -hmm. but they're trying to get back to that level. And they have a transfer coming in from app state and Jalen McLeod off the edge who should prove to be a good reinforcement. 
Yes. Yeah. We lost a, a few of those via, you know, the going to the NFL draft, transfers out. It was definitely an area of need. We already kind of bolstered that a little bit, bringing in guys like Elijah McAllister from Vanderbilt, who's only going to be here for one year. But uh, I'm really, I, I've talked about him a lot, I think, on your show, who I'm high on. But you definitely still need depth. And when I say depth, that's not me relegating Jalen McLeod to just a backup role. This guy very well could come in and earn the starting job at that position. Uh, that's another battle that's going to be fun to watch, not just between the two I just mentioned, but everybody at that position. And I think you're going to see a lot of different individuals playing there. If you watch tape on Jalen McLeod, you're going to instantly find probably a lot of people pointing to a Texas A&M game where he and App State gave Texas A&M one of the many fits they had all last season, uh, forcing fumbles. I, I think Jalen McLeod, to me, this is a guy that's ready to step up at the power five level, uh, obviously because he got an offer from Auburn in the power five level, but he really does seem like he's got the skill set. Some people will tell you undersized at that position. I don't buy into that a whole lot. I understand there is some validity to that in some circumstances, but you know, a guy that's got tenacity, that's got athletic ability at that type of position and, and yeah, he may only be here for one, maybe two years, given COVID eligibility years, all that kind of scenario we talk about. But I'm really high on him. And uh, I really am intrigued what that position is going to be able to pull off, given maybe what we're doing is bridging the gap to the next wave of edge rushers we're building up within our program. These guys will only be here for a minute number of years. But it could be a fun minute number of years with talking about Jalen McLeod and others. McLeod uh, logged quite a bit of time there at App State playing 25 total games. And you see his numbers from 2022. And I'm sure that uh, Hugh Freeze has no issue with tacking on six sacks to his defensive front as McLeod registered there in the Sun Belt uh, last season. Mm -hmm. Kyle, we appreciate you stopping by. I, I know that uh, late May into June is big in regards to camps and uh, recruiting is there anything that you've got any kind of lean on or anything to be looking out for? Maybe not in terms of camps, but, you know, Hugh Freeze has noted some areas still where they'd like some help. I think there's still an offensive lineman spot out there they'd like to fill. So really it's pieces for depth and otherwise that we're going to be looking for. The big one was just getting the transfer portal started for the spring because that was getting Auburn fans a little antsy. And then now the big one with the quarterback. But my mind would be looking towards offensive line, wide receiver you bring in a quarterback who's used to having nice wide receivers to throw to and not that we don't have some here they just haven't really shown themselves of yet but you kind of want to maybe reward his you know his good faith for coming over by finding him an extra weapon on top of what you've already got to offer at auburn kyle loomis e to c network e2c network right here on youtube kyle we appreciate you stopping by as always and laying down the knowledge for us thank you so much for having me in war eagle